couple of pieces of advice I would give to uh, young aspiring composers. I think I'm still an aspiring composer and I, I want to keep being that way. One that's an incredibly practical uh, piece of advice I would say is that uh, notation software is a very helpful tool. Uh, it's a tool. So don't spend your entire time composing through a computer or through software. Go get some staff paper and go off somewhere where you're not, where there's a piano or uh, uh, any kind of digital equipment and just be analog, be natural and jot down um, contours. They don't have to be fully four melodies. Uh, just get back in touch, keep a foot in both, be, be digitally savvy and be connect, be natural. The other thing I would say to aspiring composers is go hear all the music you possibly can go to concerts, go to every reading session you can, start a single file library. Failure is, um, that's, a, that's a big part of life, right? It's, it's just part of everything. The role that I think failure plays in the creative process is there's a certain level of acceptance, I think, that, that comes with work. And let's like say you send in a piece of music and typically you're not gonna send in a piece of music if you think it's bad. You're not gonna send in a piece of music if you think it's okay. You're gonna send in a piece if you think, this is good, this is gonna, this is the one. When you get a letter back that, that just says, simply says, no thank you. Um, it, so you have to have a, a certain level of discernment, discerning, okay, is it no thank you that it's not a good fit for this publisher? Or no thank you, do I really need to go back and, and look at why is it a no thank you? And, and I think that's true in just in relationships too. Uh, there's all there are all kinds of forms of rejection uh, that aren't always so uh, easy to cope with as a piece of paper. Uh, and every once in a while, uh, an editor will give a, a very gracious gift, um, which is this was not a good fit, and here's why. And if it's even one or two sentences. That is a tremendous gift, because editors don't really have that kind of time. They barely have the time to deal with the yeses that they're going to work through. But if it's one or two sentences like, wow, uh, I, some good ideas here, but the level of difficulty of the music doesn't fit the age of the text. Like, for example, it's a, the music might be a little complex, but the text is more early elementary. That's a, that's a great piece of advice. Um, so those failures can be incredible learning opportunities if you take them as learning opportunities. The other thing that is incredibly important is a piece making it or not making it is not an assessment of you as a person. And if you take the whatever feedback you get uh, and grow from it, then you are succeeding as a person. And I've actually started to keep some of my rejection letters. I, I regret throwing them away <clears throat> uh, whenever I go to visit schools and I talk about this exact thing and they all want to see the successes and, and that's great and the book and all that. And then I say, hey, do you want to do you want to hear a rejection letter? And they're like, yes, because then, and then I read it and they're like, oh, it's like an epic bird. And I can't believe they said that. And no, and, and, and but they they relate to that because we, I mean, if they've ever, anytime they've ever gotten a B or a C or a D or an F on work, it's one thing to get a, a bad grade on work where you know you just mailed it in. But when you really try it and, and you're like, oh, everybody's been there, but we grow and we're, we're going to be, we're, we're in class our entire life. Sometimes the teacher sits behind a desk and you sit in columns and rows, but most of the time our teachers are just the world around us and we can choose to learn from it or not and uh, I choose to learn from it.